those comps the gates are already open yeah this is the composition we've seen from the boys this wind walker death knight set up with gorecki often playing the feral affinity Ooh. to help get very aggressive what? never lucky they're actually going to be bringing in uh, elemental shaman assassination rogue resto druid and this is a comp we saw yesterday in the european scene and and uh it seemed quite effective also colo and zach both have rogue yeah I mean, never let they might be spreading themselves a little bit thin. I would say that the boys have specialized on this Windwalker Death Knight for this year currently, whereas Belito and Zach are definitely treading into alt territory, trying to take advantage of some of the strategies that Europe debuted yesterday and use them themselves against the boys in a bit of a surprise fashion in game number one. So far, the momentum is building for the boys as they have forced major defensive cooldowns from Belito quite early on. Crowd control still secured on Colo. Belito may fall within seconds here if they can continue the chain just a tad bit longer. Colo leaves the clone, connects a quick heal. Belito has managed to get space to breathe thanks to Zach's support and will stay in the fight. Yeah, Belito manages to survive, but for never lucky, how long will it last? They need to find some semblance of counter pressure here. Right now, the boys looking good. They have all the momentum in their favor. They haven't been forced defensive at one point in this game. We need to start seeing some setups come in from Never Lucky. Yeah, it looks like they're going for one right now, trying to take down Chun-Li with good crowd control onto Gorecki, preventing him from healing his teammate, who is still continuing to dip low on health. Diffuse magic to remove one maledict and a dispel to remove the other. Good usage of those abilities to remove that healing absorption. And now the boys look to strike back. Colo with the premeditated iron bark did reduce a lot of that threat, allowing himself to easily recover from that attack out by the boys. Yeah, Valido on the elemental shaman is not an easy target by no means. So for Smexen and Chun Li, it's going to be difficult to actually take them down. Now I want to see them consistently make swaps onto Zach. As for Zach, he's going to be making a swap over on Gorecki right now, trying to punish him a little bit, get some pressure for his team. Alito still just trying to do what he can to survive. Cole potentially looking for a drink right now. And we've seen in this meta, in these tournaments so far, it really is important for these druids to try to sneak off and get drinks when they can. It's all about trying to deny the mana regeneration for these healers. Yeah, most certainly is. I would say that Gorecki has been getting the upper hand of Colo in this match in terms of crowd control, which puts Valido really far on the back foot and potentially close to going down here in game number one. Multiple defensive cooldowns have been forced out from that attack by the boys. They're in a dominant position. They've got control and a lead in mana. Zach is looking desperately to set something up for his team by constantly switching to Gorecki, locking him in a double stun combo. Gorecki relatively disrespecting the damage whoa, there and whoa, whoa. two cooldowns, but Valido is still in trouble. The pressure is simply not going anywhere right now for the team of the boys as Valido is getting crushed beneath the weight. Touch of Death is about to go off and Valido could easily go down to its explosion of damage. He ducks around the corner. Touch of Death ticks. Smexen looks to close this out. Chun-Li in hot pursuit. Valido holds on by a thread but ultimately falls and the boys take game number one. Okay, we got a lot to talk about. Ellie Rug, this is one of those compositions that we see yesterday plays that are coming out this Oof. may be the most dominant vote that we've ever had that's not looking lucky there six percent of you at home think never lucky you're gonna take it and i mean they seem desperate they're just trying to pull out strategies that they saw in the other region maybe with not enough practice under their belt and the boys have focused so heavily on this composition which is just well-rounded and good into most things so if you perform at the highest level you're easily going to outclass your opponents that are desperately trying to scramble with something to counteract it here on Tolveron Arena, at least, Never Lucky have set a good stage for themselves for a great performance, but now they need the execution to back it up. Yeah, and interestingly enough, Zach in this matchup, he's running Tiger Eye Brew, which I have to disagree with. Smexen on the Death Knight is going to be pretty resistant to magic, especially with anti-magic shell. It's going to negate a lot of the damage you're able to do with Tiger Eye Brew. So I'm, I'm not exactly sure what the game plan is of Never Lucky is. Potentially, they want to be looking for swaps on a Gorecki with an all-in. They could potentially use Serenity, which he specced into, with Tiger Eye Brew and try to take him down through bear form. But I think that's going to be really difficult. And also, if you guys want to be checking the Azurite traits that these guys are rocking in the arena, if you want to see the gear, if you want to see those choices in talent, you can use the plugin right now, powered by Wowhead. And you can see everything that Venruki just pointed out to you on the stream. It's Zach going to be taking some pressure here. Yeah, yep. Zach getting lowered, forced to trade out the touch of Karma immediately. Colo now into a Cyclone. Gorecki playing very offensive in these matchups. And I named Gorecki, or yeah, I named Gorecki the MVP of last tournament just with how he was able to perfectly balance his offense and defense, push in when his team needed it, look for crowd control at opportune moments. 
Piccolo, unfortunately, into a Polymorph right now. I think that actually got Dark Stimulus from by Smexen. So Smexen has been doing a really good job with that ability, stealing some of these crowd control spells from Pack Rats and Colo, and uh, buying his, t getting his team some opportunity in the match to get some pressure rolling. I'm curious if Greki is running Feral Affinity in this specific matchup because if he is, he may be a target. No, actually, opting to run Balance Affinity, so he wants to avoid Polymorphs, get some extra range on his heels. It's a smart decision on Tolveron. Smexen finally being pressured here by Never Lucky, but able to trade defensive cooldowns and recover. Now Chun-Li looks to reverse some damage in their team's favor. There has been signs of life for Never Lucky here in game two, a couple of close calls. No major defensive cooldowns pulled on their part. That Icebound Fortitude, definitely a major objective for them to get from Smexen throughout the fight. If they can get through that just as dampening starts to ramp up, he is going to be a vulnerable target and potentially a kill for the team of Never Lucky. Polo playing far away. Gorecki chasing him around, looking for Cyclones. Gets counterspelled. That could put his team behind. Smexen getting pressured. They desperately want to pull that Icebound Fortitude from Smexen, but without dampening, Death Strike appears to be enough for Smexen to stabilize. Yeah, Smexen should ultimately be able to survive, but Zach in that last attempt with Serenity. Yeah, well, that was a scary amount of damage for Smexen to really deal with, so pay attention to that cooldown for Zach. It's got about 25 seconds left. It's that teal icon below his character. And when he has that up, he's going to be able to do big damage, uh, reduces the cost of basically all your cheese spenders, increases your damage, and also reduces the cooldown of all those abilities. So it's a triple threat offensive cooldown. It can be really scary when they have that active. Yeah, it definitely is. Arcane Power currently active for Pack Rats, but getting crowd controlled and denied on some of the burst here, potentially. We see the boys going after Colo, trying to make a swap onto the healer, as a classic Windwalker Death Knight is known to do. Colo is able to make a quick escape back to the pillar in that bear form, now restabilizing. Mana fairly even on both sides. Gorecki is now looking to turn that in his own team's favor by sitting down for a drink. Polymorph actually Dark Simulacrum by Smexen, I believe, as Cola was tossed into that for a moment, but no real effective damage, able to get thrown out off the back of it. Gorecki's just going after Pack Rats a tad bit, trying to add whatever he can to the fight to do a little bit of extra damage for his team, especially in this long, dampening, slow-paced meta as a healer. You want to do everything in your power to add any extra damage you can. It can definitely get you a mana lead later on in the fight. Zack activating some powerful aggressive cooldowns to try and take down Smexen. You really want to see an Icebound Fortitude trade for this touch of death, but they're not even denting Smexen. Yep, Smexen really hasn't been under too much pressure in this matchup. Cole caught into the bash. Gorecki once again looking for some crowd control. Smexen under fire right now. chun -Li sitting on pack routes. I actually don't like that. I really want them to just continue the pressure on Zack. I think chasing around the Arcane Mage isn't necessarily the most bang for your buck. You want to be that distraction as the Arcane Mage pulling off the melee, forcing them to do limited damage. And I think it's better for these teams to just try to pressure someone else, go after Colo, go after Zach in these matchups. You're going to get a lot more done. Yeah, most certainly will be the case as the boys look to make a swap to Colo once again, locking him down in an asphyxiate. However, with Thorns prematurely activated, they decide to abandon that swap and go back to attacking Zach. Zach's smartly just avoiding the fight while his healer is crowd controlled. That's definitely an effective way of avoiding death. If your healer is in crowd control, just run your character far away from the enemy team and try and avoid them as long as possible. Definitely a strength that a Windwalker monk brings into the arena, even though Zach is multiclassing onto. I don't know if he's really going to show us every single class in the game at this point, but he may be able to. Definitely good defensive awareness on his part. We do not see him running a similar build to what Blizzo is running in this composition. I do not see any grapple weapons from Zack. Instead, trying to take advantage of that Tiger Eye Brew to get through some of the plate armor. But as you already pointed out, Venruki, Death Knights are durable to magic damage as well. So the Tiger Eye Brew may not be as valuable as denying Death Strike with that grapple weapon. Yeah, I think that's definitely a fair assessment of the matchup. And Zach, as well, like I said, he's been playing the Serenity. It is a bigger burst cooldown, but it's going to be less consistent damage, and your burst is going to be up a little bit less often with that ability. So the consistent pressure on Smexen isn't going to be as high, but your one-shot potential is a little bit higher with that build Zach is running. So far, in terms of mana, Gorecki is doing quite well. Still at 60%. Colo just a little bit behind as we move into 8% dampening. Good pressure here from Chun Li and Colo. Ring of Peace backs him up by Zach. Nicely done to keep Colo alive, but Colo needs to try to escape at this point. He's taking out a lot of this damage with Iron Bark. Smacks in Chun Li. They're turning their attention onto Zach now, and I like what the boys are doing. They're making sure they have multiple pressure points, forcing Colo to keep hots on multiple targets. 
now they ultimately force out the Touch of Karma from Zac. I'm curious if Chun-Li is going to Touch of Karma the Touch of Karma and try and go for a kill. It seems like they're more happy just punching away at Kolo, turning him into a bear punching bag. Chun-Li gets bashed up as Kolo tries to set up some burst for his team and escape to safety, managing to get around the corner. There is decent damage establishing itself for the team of Never Lucky. Mana is still equivalent. So it's still anyone's match at this point as Dampening continues to rise. Counter spell secured onto Gareki, interrupting some of his incoming healing. His team, although, seems to be stable. Zach getting cycloned up at low HP. Gareki doing a great job to capitalize on that balance affinity to control up the team as much as possible, giving his melee more breathing room to avoid being crowd controlled themselves. Now deciding to cyclone up Kolo, and once again, Zach using his kiting. Chun-Li actually put his transcendence on top of Zach's, so when Zach tried to escape with it, Chun-Li could immediately follow him as they are playing the same class, the Windwalker Monk. Good decision-making there on Chun-Li's part. Interesting little knockback there by Chun-Li to try and disrupt some of the Fists of Fury damage. Definitely skill-capped on that Windwalker, but likely further dampening is required for these punishing plays to really play out. Yeah, Sean Lee putting some pressure onto Zach. Zach doing a decent job kiting away, trying to avoid a lot of that pressure coming in. But unfortunately, while he's running away, he's not able to really get out too much pressure. And in the meantime, Smexen's been all over Colo, really taxing his mana. Gorecki, I believe right now, is sitting down in stealth, looking for a drink. Packrats was able to shut it down, I believe. Gorecki doesn't have that much of a ma mana lead, but with Colo almost completely oom and the amount of pressure that the boys have been putting out in this matchup, I feel like it's just a matter of time before Never Lucky goes down. Yeah, I mean, at this point, it's looking to be the case. They really haven't gotten any major objectives. Colo is constantly pinned in bear. He's completely tapped on mana. If he is not able to escape to safety, he's likely to go down soon. Zack is now left behind. They could cleave him up. Gorecki jumps into the fight to stun Zack and deny the drink. Definitely top-level decision-making on Gorecki's part. Zack forced to trade Touch of Karma once again to stay in the fight just that little bit longer. Colo still has Innervate, so he can make all of his healing spells free. That's going to be his last lifeline, really, in this fight after he doesn't have anything to work with. Finally, some counter pressure coming out from Never Lucky towards Smexen. Can they get that major objective? Can they get the Icebound Fortitude in this push? They really need to, and they do. They manage to stay in the fight. Yep, Smexen with the anti-magic shell should be able to survive, but Gorecki caught into the bash. There's really not too much left for him. Smexen has to keep himself alive as Gorecki caught into the full polymorph. This is a beautiful setup coming in from Never Lucky. This would be a miracle if they could take down Smexen with the setup, but it gets denied by Chun-Li's double leg sweep. Packrass decides to just ice block out of that, trying to get aggressive. And I don't mind that play as Arcane Mages are very difficult to take down. It looked like it could potentially land a kill, but ultimately Smexen will survive. And now that Zach doesn't have his Serenity available, I think Smexen should be fine until that's back up. One thing I will say for Never Lucky is if they can get these compositions up to the same level of, as the top tier teams running them, they definitely could be a real threat they're still in it here in game number two as they try to battle it back in the lower bracket. Both these teams facing elimination, and Colo is in dire straits. Desperate times right now to survive. Will he manage to escape to safety? Stunning up Smexen, ducking around the corner, able to avoid death for now. Packrats with arcane power up. He's just mashing out spell steals to try and strip off the heal over time effects of Gorecki, forcing Gorecki to be tapped on mana. Gorecki actually trying to sit down for a drink. Both druids completely out of mana. Momentum swinging actually quite even. Even at this point, with 31% dampening, setting foot into the match, Colo's got good distance. Zach trades, Smexen recovers. Both teams stabilized, but now Zach stunned. Crowd control secured onto Colo with two members taken out of the match for a period of time. It will be difficult for Colo to ultimately save Zach, and it is not going to be enough off the back of a dark simulacrumed poly. Perfect play on Smexen's part. They advance to match point. Let's go back home. Let's go back to something that we do know. We'll have to see if this is enough for Never Lucky pulling out the mirror here with their backs against the wall. All right, Colo going with that renewal, whereas Gorecki is going with wild charge. So Colo is much more afraid of being targeted down, but he will have limited mobility as a result, which allows Gorecki to be a lot more of a playmaker, already initiating great crowd control and forcing massive dest <laughs> destruction across the board. Zach is just portaling to try and get to safety, but he's so far away from Colo. Tries to make it across the map. Triple Maledict. The Ursul's Vortex pulls. Is he just going to die in the opener? Off the back of Gorecki's play, he is completely owned in game three. Ring, ring, it's Feed versus the fake Zebras. We're all tied up one and one. Who is going to find themselves on match point? Who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament? Keep in mind, folks, we're doing a brand new thing. You have just entered in the middle of history, the longest series that has ever been played 
in battle for Azeroth.